we are the other Wasm project in CNCF sandbox, so it's really nice to have a Wasm Cloud precede us. So, you know, we, uh, our project is called Wasm Edge. We also started in 2019, and we started um, as a WebAssembly runtime outside of the browser, right? You know, at the time, a lot of people asked questions, how is that different from Java, right? You know, that's uh, because you have another bytecode, um, uh, a bytecode virtual machine where it's cross-platform, provide security and all that. Uh, we heard this before, this is called Java, right, you know. So uh, we keep fighting this perception because, you know, um, in the cloud native space, Wasm is very different from Java, but I wouldn't go into that because, you know, last year, uh, the, the, the progress I want to report is that we finally find a use case that's very similar to Java, and, you know, that's where Java had uh, 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 tremendous success but failed in the new use case, which is write once, run anywhere, but for GPUs, not just for CPUs, using Wasm, right? So. You know, um, first, let me take a step back to say, you know, say if you are writing AI application or especially LM application, what do you do today? You know, so when it started, you know, the LM application is mostly people just use uh, uh, some kind of API server that's either provided by uh, a SaaS provider or OpenAI, or you can run your own large language model using things like Olama and, you know, things like that, and Lama.cpp to start an open uh, application server, API server, and then use our orchestration framework like LangChain, some, kind, uh, some Python framework to tie them together, and then build an a, a entire application, a whole chain of different models and different pumps and different applications, right? Um, that is all fine. However, the, this whole process is very much geared towards research, you know, um, so in order for uh, to really have the tight down and the highly secure and, uh, um, you know, uh, 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 deployable application. We need to um, have applications that are much tighter, in, uh, tighter integrated, move data and the model together. You know, move the execution code that handles the data together with the data, right? You know, so that means to build our own application servers. Like, that means to build things like prompt engineering and REG framework and, you know, things like that into the application server so that we compile the whole LM application into one piece of deployable application and then have Kubernetes to orchestrate it, right? You know, so that is very different from the current paradigm where you have, you know, multiple containers, multiple Python scripts and, you know, things like that. But in order to do that, there is a, we have the problem that we, have, we thought we have solved all those years ago with Java. It's the most, namely, it's, uh, it's, there's two problems. The first is the heavyweight problem. So, you know, if you remember, when, when Java, came, Java came along, there was also a, a heavyweight solution for web application that is called Pro, right? So now we have something called Python. The Python Docker image itself, the PyTorch Docker image itself is four gigabytes, okay? So in order to deploy that application onto, say, edge devices in a car, you know, in a lot of our users using it in, uh, in, uh, in factory settings or the automobile settings and you know, things like that, it is just not feasible. And also, the PyTorch runtime depends on the uh, underlying uh, GPU framework like CUDA and, you know, things like that, so that you have to specify those at the Python level, which, which is make it not portable, very complex and not portable. And the second problem is really um, uh, a very classic problem is that, you know, before Java came along, you know, when we write a web application, we have to compile it on our own machines, test it. And when we deploy it in the cloud, we have to test it there as well, compile it all over again, because it's likely that my development machine and my deployment machine are different operating systems or different architectures. With the new um, uh, GPU frameworks or with the new large language models, this problem has been amplified by 100 times because now you don't, uh, you not only have two different CPU types, you have tens of GPU types. So the, the application I develop on my Mac notebook, uh, on my MacBook, is probably gonna rely on things like the Metal framework and you know, things like that in order to run well on the Mac GPU. However, the same thing, not only cannot be directly deployed on a media machine that use CUDA, it cannot even be compiled on the media machine. So the whole cloud native toolchain is not set up to distribute things like this. It's the, it is not to, you know, to modify your application and then recompile your application on the deployment platform. It is the, the whole Kubernetes and Docker ecosystem is designed to distribute binary artifacts. How do we do that? You know, that's a, so that is a new challenge that we, that we see today, right? You know, is that, um, you know, um, application developers develop those applications, develop the new type of API servers with all those multiple models and integrated stuff, and then they test it on their machine, and then they find out, you know, what works on machine doesn't work on the remote machine, right? You know, so, um, by the way, things like, um, you know, lightweight containers like Docker and uh, 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 things like that doesn't solve this problem because, you know, um, 
even if you use Docker, you have to install the NVIDIA driver inside Docker. You have to use the NVIDIA shim that goes with the Docker host, right? So it doesn't solve this uh, portability problem. So what Waza Magic did is that we work with uh, W3C to come up with a new, um, um, uh, uh, a new level of, of abstraction. It's called Wazi and Wazi Neural Network. What it does is that uh, we define the GPU access or the um, AI inference um, primitives primitives in the, in the, in, at the bytecode level as API calls. So basically, uh, developers only need to write towards the WASI NN API and compile that application into bytecode. And then, um, whatever devices, whatever GPUs, could it be uh, NVIDIA or Mac or you know, AMD or you know, TPU, NPU, you know, that's uh, the special inference chip AWS have, the special inference chip you know, Azure has, as long as it was supported by uh, was image, they would just uh, deploy that deploy that runtime on there and then move, just copy the binary application like you used to do with your Java application, right? Copy it to a new machine and it will automatically run. So we, again, we separate out the role of the developers. The developer only need to make sure the application runs on his own or her own laptop. And then the ops people figures out which host requires which driver. Is it CUDA 11 or CUDA 12? Is that the AMD driver? Is that whatever, right? You know, so then you know those two rows. After those two rows are separated, you know, the applications become portable again. So um, I'll close because I, I'm not allowed to do any demo. But but we have a we have a, a, a one line demo where uh, it's gonna install Wasmage and install uh, and download a large language model onto your own laptop before you leave this conference, and you will be able to run it without internet connection. You know, by chat uh, by, by by chatting with some a large language model on your own machine. Make, uh, and, and, and really show you it runs on everybody's machine today. Thank you.